Okay, what is going on? So I never made it. Whoa, she is having a seizure there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the stars are changing. What the? F <clears throat> Uh, welcome to the Nords. My name is Han, and jumping right into this video, I will list off some of the best story and feel-good progressive game for this year to binge on for the holidays. That means there's no PUBG or Fortnite, so if you're expecting to see some of that, I just save you some time. We are strictly focusing on just old-fashioned fun plot. Starting the list off, we have Doki Doki Literature Club. It's basically a visual novel game with choices and interaction. With each decision you make, it creates different outcomes for your ending. However, this story may look cute and innocent, it is actually really dark. I won't ruin anything for you guys, just try it out on Steam. And the best part about this, it's completely free. With the holidays coming by and you're lonely, this is the perfect game for you to pull out those dating skills and pick your psycho waifus. Just don't make her bad. All right, for the next one on our list, do you like Dark Souls? Do you like white guys saving some type of Asian village? If so, then I got a game for you called Neo. Neo is dubbed the Japanese Dark Souls. However, it is more fast placed like Ninja Gaiden, where it makes you think on your toes from the mid combo manipulation to tracking yours and the enemy key. You are always on high alert of everything that is going on during your screen. Once you defeat your enemy or die multiple times, you are always pumped and ready to go for the next one. Or just quit. But it's definitely a game that keeps you hooked from minute one. So get ready for your fingers to be buff again, cause that rolling button is looking mad juicy. Fairy tale has always been known about the princess Funyan's prince, ending with a happily ever after. <laughs> Wrong. Little do most people know that the story originates from a much darker place. With the inspiration of grim fairy tales, time to take the Disney kid shit away and bring in the little nightmare. In this dark game, you solve complex puzzles within the creepy spooky environment, not knowing much of what's going to happen at the beginning. You will soon learn and encounter many of its horror within the game, from janitors that look like Freddy Krueger with long dangling arms and Tweedledee and Tweedledoo chefs. As you progress throughout the game, you discover more of its lore. With this unique art style and suspensefulness, it will definitely tug and push you along the whole ride of figuring out what is going to happen next. Who would have ever thought that the once popular Gmon game, Prop Hunt, would get a AAA sci-fi horror adaption? In the game Prey, you are in a space station researching an invasive alien species called the Typhons in confinement. <sighs> and of course, we all know where this is going. They break out of confinement, people are screaming, people are dying, and the main end goal is to get the hell out of the space station. Not much of a surprise. But what is surprising are the shape-shifting assholes. By the end of this game, they will make you have trust issues with everything around you. I'm looking at you, mug. This game is a butt-clenching horror for sure. With each room you enter, you are always paranoid if an object is going to jump out and turn out to be the Typhons. So if you're playing this game, prepare your anxiety pills and get ready to break everything on sight. Gearing up for the next one on the list, literally, we have Nier Automata. Nier is a story of the Terminator. If the android were Japanese, who goes Super Saiyan? And the main character having some thick thighs. The gameplay is a hack and slash with an RPG element. The game provides many awesome moments where you just feel good slicing the enemy apart. With its variety of unique combos and abilities, you will always be invested in the battles of trying new things out. And also not to mention with the wally good feeling robots all around you, you will want to cuddle and protect them with your dear life. I mean, just look at that face. Ooh. For the next game, we are jumping to childhood. Welcome to Mario Odyssey. In this 3D platformer game, we control the true new main star, Cappy. I mean, he is literally doing all the heavy lifting within the game. He becomes a stepping tool for Mario to jump on, and using his power of shifting one soul to another, I don't know, it kind of makes Mario look like a chump. I mean, let's look at the facts here. What is Mario really doing throughout the whole game if Cappy was involved? That's right, just jumping. I guess we could rename Mario back to his original name. <laughs> I guess we could call him Jumpman. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, bad jokes aside, this game was long overdue. With Mario getting his last true 3D game seven years ago, the wait for the new Mario was definitely worth it. This game is absolutely spectacular. With this abundant planet for you to explore, you are always turning every corner to find secret hidden moons. Also, with the ability of being almost anything within the game and gaining their trade, it's addictive and fun to use. I mean, rampaging as a T-Rex was pretty dope. It's literally one of the most fun Mario games to date. 
Oh boy, so for the next game, do I really, really love and hate this game? Having the best and most innovative art style of 2017, we have Cuphead. The visuals are just amazing. Having the 1930 rubber hose animation really captured my attention the first time they announced the game back in 2010. So of course when it came out of 2017, I grabbed it from Steam Store and man did it not disappoint. Bosses and level design is always exhilarating to go through and the art of each level is always something I look forward to. The gameplay is super simple. You run and gun. Sounds easy, but this game is literally the devil in disguise. It lures you in with enticing views, but torments you throughout the entire game. As hard as this game is, every time you die it's a learning experience. The game is fair in terms of giving you out information that is easy to learn, so every time you die, you'll understand why you died. It's your fault. So as you play this game, just know, you will die again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And that's perfectly okay. In the gorgeous world of robotic Jurassic Park, I bring you Horizon Zero Dawn. You begin in a post-post-apocalyptic world as Meredith 2.0, otherwise known as Aloy, where technology is dominant and for some reason, humanity got brought back to the caveman days, where they are now throwing wooden spears at steel. It's actually really effective apparently. The selling point of this game is definitely the story and the flexible combat system. As you get immersed into this world, you are thrown into the vast unknown territory of lore and enemy. The encounters to the steel beasts are always something to look forward to, as there is no single right way to fight them. You get to decide on how you approach them, with many options leading to different scenario on how the steel beast will react. So what are you waiting for? The Dinobots are right for the hunting. Did you always want to have a Japanese high school student life and make cliche decisions? Well, I bring you Persona 5. During the day, you are an average high school student going through daily life. At night, you are a mind flayer. Goal of this game? Well, of course, to turn the douchebag adults into nice people. This game has two parts. The first part of the game is a JRPG style and a turn-based combat. You battle these things called personas, and once you capture them, you use capture persona to either enhance or change your combat skills. But that's not all. For the second part of the game, you gotta worry about time management and daily life decisions, where every choice can lead to a consequence within the story. For example, sometimes within the game you have to decide whether to build a relationship with a certain someone, or maintaining your job and also maintaining your grades at the same time. So it's really multi-dimensional in that sense. So it's up to you how you want the character to be. So this is where the game truly shines. It captivates you through the music and its lore. Not to mention that the replayability is always going to be there. From having different abilities and mixing the story, it is easily a game to play over and over again that will keep you entertained and fresh throughout each playthrough. So get ready, the anime life you always dreamed about is here. The top binge game that's on my list is of course, hands down, the Zelda game that you never played before. Hell, most of you guys probably have this game as your number one game anyway. Throw in away the old fashioned Zelda linear storyline and introduce an open world ended survival, you get Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is by far the best Zelda game to date. Right at the beginning of this game, you are introduced to a vast world where you can go anywhere you want. See that distance? You can go there. With the same old story of stopping Ganon with Zelda, like every other Zelda game, what makes this game different from the others is the way you approach the quest. You can literally decide right at the get go to go to Hyrule Castle and fought off Ganon straight away. Of course it's going to be difficult. Or you could go out in Hyrule and learn what happened to each village and town in the wake of Calamity Ganon. But more than half the time, they remind you that you got your ass kicked 100 years ago. Thanks guys. What makes this game so great is literally the open worldness. While you are doing your main quest, you are more than likely going to get lost. But that's the best part. When you get derailed from the main quest, you are rewarded with the game beautiful design of the environment shrines and side quest. The feature within Breath of the Wild that is very astonishing to me is that whatever you think that is applicable and sounds possible, you are most likely able to do it. There are also moments where you're going to feel baffled and confused no matter how far you proceed within the game, you are going to approach mini bosses and enemies that will still one shot you. F*** you Lionels. 
but vice versa, you are also able to feed them within all stages in the game. So I could continue to talk about this, but there is literally too much to talk about. I easily put over 50 hours on this and I still haven't been in this game. So get your hoarding skill ready. You are about to become one big pack rat. Well that's it guys, that's my top 10 binge game, thanks for watching. If you have any games that's not on the list, feel free to comment down in the comment section down below. I will get to you guys and tell you why you're wrong. But if you enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. Noids out.